Kristen Poole, the Artistic Director of the Sun Valley Center for the Arts. My colleague Courtney Gilbert and I had the pleasure of putting this exhibition together. It's actually an exhibition in two parts. There are five artists here in the gallery, and then there are two sculptures that will live from June until September at Craters of the Moon National Monument. At the close of the exhibition, those two sculptures will be moved into the city of Ketchum. When Court and I found out that 2016 was the centennial of the National Park Service, it made immediate sense for us to conceive of an exhibition around the National Park. When we began to think about who would be able to realize sculpture on the park, it was very important to us that we had artists who had the history and the knowledge to not just realize individual works in their studio, but to realize works that were going to be public. We knew right away that one of those artists was a man named Jason Middlebrook. We brought Jason out to the park. He spent time walking around the park with Courtney and I. It was almost immediate that his response was to fall in love with one of the key indicators of the park's ecosystem, and that is the limber pine tree. Jason loved the sculptural forms of those windswept pines, so he conceived of a couple of ideas and then went back to his studio and built this 13-foot high slate mosaic, which is an homage to the limber pine tree. He wanted it embedded in a place where it would be surrounded by other limber pines and be more of a discovery and something that people stumbled upon. The other person that we sought out was a man named John Grotti. John's practice has largely shifted from a studio-based practice to one that is very much embedded in doing large public art projects that draw attention to a place's biology and geology. His first day in the park, he spent sleeping overnight in a crater, came away from the park knowing that he wanted to do something that would draw attention to the very unique ecology that is Craters of the Moon. And he took a digital map of one of the lava tubes in the park. And the sculpture that he realized is an interpretation of the lava tube. He has created a 75 foot long by about 12 or 14 foot high sculpture that is made out of standing yellow cedar from Alaska that you can actually travel through. We encourage people to get in there and walk through it. It is, in fact, about framing your views and taking the time to imagine that journey through a lava tube as if you would imagine the journey through any um, geologic system. In addition to the work by Jason Middlebrook and John Grady, we also have work by three other artists. And as we put together the entire project, it was really important to both of us that we include artists who would look at the park from a variety of viewpoints and who would respond to its landscape using different kinds of materials. Cindy Tower was the first ever artist in residence at Craters of the Moon. Her desire for Craters to start a residency was the origin of this entire project. She's an artist who's really interested in cycles of creation and destruction and in the idea of decay and what comes before and after. She was drawn to the park in part because of its history of creation through these volcanic eruptions over 15,000 years. The paintings that she made at the park are incredibly textural. She made them using tar and asphalt and oil paint. They're really dense and heavy and they get at the actual physical landscape of the park and the tactile quality of it. Charles Lindsay is an artist who works at the intersection between art and science. He was originally trained as a geologist, and he's currently the director of the SETI Institute's Artist in Residence program. SETI is the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. He kind of looks at the universe with both um, a micro lens, and then he also looks at the universe through this macro lens and his interest in outer space. Recently, he's brought together kind of his fascination with examining the Earth's ecosystems with his interest in outer space in a body of work he calls Mining the Moon, which really gets at the social history of Craters of the Moon as a place for space exploration. Since 1969, there's been a relationship between NASA and Craters of the Moon. Lindsay's work brings together sounds and images, both still and moving, that get at both this history of NASA's relationship with the park and also kind of the possibilities inherent in the universe. 
He presents them in these wonderful sculptural formats that give us the feeling that we're walking into a space station. Bin Don is a photographer who's become incredibly well known for his experimentation with different kinds of photographic techniques. His family moved to the United States when he was two years old, and as a child, they weren't particularly interested in going out into the wilderness and camping together. But he knew America's national parks, and particularly places like Yosemite, through famous photographs. About 10 years ago, at the time that Don had begun experimenting with daguerreotypes, he decided to visit Yosemite and see firsthand some of the places that were, have been made so famous by photographers including Carlton Watkins and Ansel Adams. What was interesting for him was that he began to feel a sense of ownership of the national parks himself. They really are an expression of what it means to be an American citizen and of the story of immigration and how all of us, no matter where we come from, share in ownership of the park. He also made portraits of some of the rangers at Craters of the Moon, portraying them as custodians and caretakers of the landscape. I think in a really beautiful way, his work gets to the heart of why we're celebrating not only Craters of the Moon, but the National Park Service during this centennial.